It looks so good. Doggy bag. There's a plan. <laughs> it doesn't work. No. Roads, who needs roads? <laughs> Change of plan again. Get your practice in for Mongolia, maybe. How beautiful is this? We're Marion and Chris, and we've been traveling full time since May 2018. It is the best atmosphere ever. Whilst attempting to drive around the world in Trudy, our home on wheels, this happened. All British travellers abroad are advised, advised uh, to return now. As borders closed around us, we decided to wait it out in Turkey until we were able to continue our adventure east. So today we are meeting up with a couple of our followers and uh, we're going to go out for a little bit of lunch in the nearby town to a local restaurant that serves local Turkish food. So we're super excited. Okay, we've after driving around a little bit, we've found a little car park here to park up. Awesome! The restaurant should be a five minute walk away at the most. I love it when you just shout out a window and go, <laughs> Listen, the park! They'll go, Woohoo! I say, we couldn't find parking, the roads are a bit tight and uh, no parking on the street. And uh, the guys on the fish stand didn't, didn't they? They sort of said down there, down there. So we've just driven, found this, and there's lots of space. So for us, it's perfect. Thank you, Kula. That's so lovely. The car park guy just offered us a cup of tea. Oh. <laughs> so we're just going to go out now. We've arrived in the town of Edramit. I think that's how you pronounce it. And we're going to go and find a little bit of lunch. Mm -hmm. We thought we're coming to the local town for lunch. In fact, we had a recommendation from one of you guys. Um, where we should go and eat, so we're going to go and check it out. There you go. This is Lokanta Baka. Everybody said <laughs> that it was a really good one, and by looking at how packed it is, it must be. <laughs> I have a... So we've come into the restaurant and uh, the owner here is going to show us the food that they've got available. It looks absolutely amazing. Cherubis, uh, with orange juice and olive oil. Okay, so this one is a red lentil patty. Celery! So this one is celery with orange juice and olive oil. Oh, walnuts! Walnuts! Walnut, a bit of mayonnaise. Similar but made with carrots. Oh, amazing. Oh, I love beetroot. Look at the beetroot. You've got beetroot there. I love beetroot. Oh, panja. Oh, super. I love panja. <laughs> so the little pancakes are actually courgette pancakes. There's also some spicy grilled fried um, courgette as well. Delicious, quite spicy, but absolutely delicious. Well, how good does all this look? What I love about restaurants like this is that all of the food is made fresh every day. And you just can't beat restaurants like this with local Turkish food. I would definitely recommend coming here if you come to this town. And it's so busy, it must be. Good. There you go, you can tell from the noise that it's busy. Wow, how good does this look? We got a bit of lamb, we got some stew here, salad, like beef, that's been salad. Wow, it looks so good. Doggy bag. So, how good does this lamb look? This shank just falls off the bone. Okay, I've got to give this a go. Mm. That is so tender. Mm. 
Is it bulgari? Actually, I think it's bulgari. It's delicious. Little deep fried potatoes. Roasted. Mm. Apparently, they've got a wood fired oven in the back. Those are delicious, cooked in the fat of the lamb. Now, in the oven, uh, we make traditional Turkish soup, kella pacha. Then we got the beef dish. Mm. Rich stew, lots of tomato flavour, perfectly seasoned. Look at this stew. I don't actually know what this is. Mm. That's also beef with a different flavour, slightly acidic, with roast potatoes on top. They look like they've got herbs on them. They are herbed seasoned potatoes. Just when you thought there wasn't enough, we've got more of the bulgur wheat with these like these little bits of meat, roast meat there. Let's give these a take with some tomato. Mm. Tastes like a stewed cough though. Delicious. I'm getting a food overload today. <laughs> Teşekkürler. Uh, his name is Hoş mu Erim? Hoş mu Erim? Hoş mu Erim? So we've had, we've had an absolutely amazing lunch. We've been joined by Dee and Thor, um, who have joined us for lunch today. Uh, they're visiting Turkey from the States for a holiday. And we've got given a little pudding here. What is it called, love? Hoş mu Erim? Let's, let's give it a try here. I'm gonna have a bit with nuts. It's got walnuts on top. Mmm, that's really sweet. That tastes like the pudding we had in Chanakale with the cheese in. It does. So we got told we had to try Paneri Helvasi, but not this toasted. This has got cheese, this has got cheese in it as well. Has it? It's got cheese in it as well. It's the same thing, but in a different form. In a different form. Amazing. Semolina. Has it got cheese Milk. in it? Did he say cheese? Local cheese ah. and walnuts on top. Yes, he did. <laughs> How amazing was that lunch? We want to say a huge thank you to Surfshark for continuing to support our Around the World Drive. For those of you that don't know what a VPN is, it stands for Virtual Private Network. It basically allows you to connect to the internet through an encrypted tunnel, keeping your personal data safe. Sometimes on the road, we use public Wi-Fi to upload our videos and to do our online banking. And by using Surfshark VPN, we know that we're keeping our online data safe. But wait, there's more to Surfshark than just online security. By changing the location of your server, you unlock content that wouldn't normally be available to you. All that sounds complicated, right? Wrong! Well, it's actually super easy. All you have to do is choose the server location and... Voila! You've just unlocked new content. There's more. Surfshark is the only VPN company that allows you to sign on with an unlimited number of devices at the same time. We're delighted to tell you that by using the code TREADTHEGLOBE, you get a massive 84% discount and four months extra for free. All you have to do is click the link in the description below to get started. So this morning we've woken up and um, heard that there's some new restrictions due to the uh, pandemic being introduced here in Turkey. Yeah, we sort of knew it was happening just like when the first lockdown happened. Uh, it's about four weeks behind the UK, so you can sort of know that it's coming. Uh, so we're thinking about it now, what the plan will be. So basically what they've announced is that the elderly, the over 60s or 65s and the under 20s will have restricted movement. And at the moment we're only affected at weekends and it's from 8pm until 10am you're not allowed out. 
Um, now that probably means we'll have to dip in a campsite uh, because if, if the police see us out on their patrols, they'll probably be wondering why we're parked out and about when there's a curfew on. I think it's respect as well. It's just being respectful and we're not over 60 yet. No, uh, we've got a bit <laughs> of a way to go. So, uh, yeah, I think it's probably a good thing to do. But we're thinking um, that there might be more tighter restrictions in the coming weeks. So I think what we're going to do is have a sit down, look at what we want to see and maybe do a little bit more filming, more intense filming, so that if we do get restricted, we still have content for you guys. So we might over film. Normally we sort of film for a day, um, travel for a day, edit for a day, and then sort of repeat it. Um, and that keeps the videos roughly about live. Uh, but we're thinking if we sort of spend four or five days filming, we'll get a couple of weeks of footage. Yeah. Um, and uh, still try and edit the videos in between. So I think that way we get to still show you everything. Yeah. Um, I think the writing's on the wall, like everywhere in the world. Uh, governments are choosing to do uh, extra curfews and locks, lockdown. So we don't think that Turkey would do it any differently because that's what everyone is doing. Exactly. So I think it's the right thing to do, isn't it? Just plan a little bit ahead and see, uh, try and have some ideas of what we can do and yeah. how we can keep Tread the Globe videos still churning out. That's for you it. Guys. Absolutely. Luckily, we've left Istanbul, uh, which yeah. is one of the main hotspots here now in Turkey, and I think they've restricted movement in yeah. in in and out of uh, Istanbul. Or if they haven't, they will do that shortly. Mm -hmm. We're trying to park away from people. As you can see, we're in quite a quiet location, yeah. and we've been here for a few days. Haven't really seen that many people at all. We've had the odd person come by and say hi, yeah. uh, but genuinely. Yeah, we um, helped dig some people out of the sand. We did. Some people we got did. Stuck in the sand. We Lovely didn't couple. film that, but there was a couple. Yeah. The beach here, the cars come down and they saw that there was tire tracks on the beach and thought it's okay to drive on and then realized that they sank. So our waffle boards, yes. Stuart, if you're Thank watching, you, yeah, we actually used them, not on Trudy, but to help somebody else in their hour of need. Yeah. <laughs> right, so we're gonna go and get the maps out and uh, do some planning. Do some planning and we'll be back, share that with you in a little bit. Okay, we have a plan. There's a plan! <laughs> so what we've done, we've planned from now until Christmas. We've taken all your sites off the map, all the emails, everything on our saved Google map, and we've come up with a rough time scale to cram in as much as we can. But is it doable? I don't know. We're going to try, definitely try. We are going to try. We're going to try. So the plan is that we're going to cram in, as we said, as much as possible in as short a time as possible yep. so that we can see everything in case they do another lockdown or restrict movement within different areas in Turkey, which we've heard they may, they may do. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be a busy few weeks and uh, let's hit the road. Well, being on the beach for that length of time has definitely made the windows dirty. I think Trudy might need a little bit of a wash. So we've just stopped off at the local supermarket. So we thought we'd do a little shop because the weekend's coming up and we're heading to a campsite. So we need some supplies. We always put on this uh, clutch lock here and a steering lock, which Marianne's just trying to get on now. All good? Uh, <laughs> why does it never work when you're on camera? <laughs> oh, you got the key stuck? Ta-da! Superb. There we go. Right, let's go and buy some food. So one of the main shops we go to is called Migros, and it's one of the main supermarkets here in Turkey. Got a couple more avocados. Oranges. You have to use plastic bags here. We don't like using plastic bags, but they don't take it at the checkout, do they, without no, the- so uh, we reuse them as bins. So we're gonna get some grilled veg, 
because I thought we'd try and have a barbecue because we haven't really had a barbecue yet have we and I've got one in the back of the van so we're gonna get some peppers and some grilled different peppers there bit of salad <laughs> oh it sprays water to keep it all really looking cold. fresh and shiny I've never seen that before, have you? So we've bought a big bag of dog food because Marianne keeps feeding the dogs. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the dogs aren't going to be angry for a while. <laughs> and neither are we. <laughs> neither are we. Got the local dogs, just having a bit of breakfast we gave them. Right, let's hit the road and uh, head a bit further south. We're all stocked up we are all for stocked the weekend. Up. For the the week? cupboards were actually really empty because uh, we'd run the stocks really down low because you don't have much storage space in the van. So it's always good to get the stocks low and then just refresh it. So uh, fact, my favorite thing to do in the van is to go off grid for like a week or two weeks and then just use everything in the cupboard. Yeah, it's great. Just use it all up. As we're driving along, there's mile after mile of olive trees and plantations. And uh, this region of Turkey is famous for its olive and production of olive oil. Wow, look at it. It's mile after mile. And there's a lot of them. A lot of them. So we're just arriving in the town of Ivalik or Ivalik, however you pronounce it. I'm not a hundred percent sure, so do let us know in the comments and uh, we're gonna head out. There's a couple of island peninsulas uh, just off here, which uh, look absolutely stunning. And a lot of people have said to us, you have to go and have a look. It's really amazing. So we're gonna go and head to those peninsulas. We're gonna try and find a campsite because it's the weekend and uh, there's curfews in the evening. So uh, we're gonna dip into a campsite for the weekend and uh, spend the weekend during the day exploring this uh, wonderful little area. is this here in Ivalek it's very windy today we're gonna head over the bridge here and head over to these uh, peninsulas there Wow beautiful A bit closed to be fair but even if we could just get water so we thought it was closed because the gates closed there but we've noticed there's another entrance that we're just going to reverse and drive down see what's see what's occurring whether it is open hopefully entrance get us okay, turn right reception there you go to pull up, pull up here. Not sure. No, that's open. There's a section there. Yeah. No, nope, doesn't seem to be anybody about. Wow, look at the colour of the water. Baba! In the 
<laughs> Change of plan again. Um, because it's slightly above our budget and the internet, and the is, internet terrible. is terrible. Um, if the internet was good, we'd probably push it. But because the internet signal is really bad here, we figured we're going to go and um, find, we, we pass water on the road that we need. So we'll go get water and then we will find a nice wild camping spot where the signal is hopefully good. Um, we can always come back. <laughs> and it is beautiful. Oh, it is beautiful. So but, but the if we can... But the for working and it's a working weekend, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, it's weekend, so it's work, it's work time. Plus, we'll have to find somewhere really quiet to avoid the curfew. Yeah. Right. We've spotted this park with benches and a barbecue. Why don't we just sleep here? It doesn't work. No. It doesn't work. I think they winterized them. So this is one of the problems that we have looking for water on the road. And then uh, when you find it, sometimes the taps don't work. And then uh, also we found a campsite, which is great, but the internet didn't work. So it's one of those, one of those today. So we found another car park um, on Google. So we're gonna go and head there. It's about 10 minutes away and we'll see. We might be able to find water there. Sometimes some of the sort of municipality car parks have picnic areas with taps. Right, we've come into this little village with a harbour. Wow, and very pretty. We're going to go and just have a little walk outside and see if we can find any water anywhere. But I'll take these glasses here. Yes, we have found a tap. There are taps here. Woohoo! Some of these beds actually come to the mosque, did not they? Yeah, by the mosque there's always taps apparently. And uh, this is like a village one, I think. Okay, we filled up with water. Mm -hmm. We're going to hit the road again. We're going to go to the other side of the peninsula and see if we can find somewhere to park up with a cell reception and uh, it's nice and quiet. So let's hit the road again. Good plan. Roads? Who needs roads? <laughs> It's gone a bit dirt tracky, love. Get your practice in for Mongolia, maybe. This is nice, we've come out by the sea now. Very pretty, love. Oh, is there like a little castle thing on there? Yeah. It's nice. Okay, so we pulled off the uh, off the the dirt track to another dirt track, and we're just going to go and have a look and see whether it's passable. See if we can get off the road and out of sight a little bit. Let's have a look. The cell towers up there, look. So the road wasn't really suitable, so we're carrying on a little bit further and see if we can uh, find somewhere else. The joy of finding a wild camping space, it doesn't always go according to plan and can take quite a while. It's very pretty though. It's beautiful. Wow. Look at this for a spot. This is beautiful. This is So we finally found a wonderful spot to park up. How beautiful is this? It's very, very windy. There's like a little castle out on the island there. Should get some nice uh, sun sunrises in the morning. I'd love to get the drone up, but it's super windy. So uh, hopefully in the next couple of days, we're going to explore this area for a couple of days, so hopefully we'll be able to share that with you. Beautiful day. Oh, 
you're still here. It's the end of the show. Make sure you click the subscribe button and the bell notification so you can join us on the next episode as we explore Junda Island here in Turkey. Bye for now.